Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on Holotni Farmer during the winter, during the cold, unforgiving winter. We shall be watching Apfelsaft. Apfelsaft fighting for the Soviet 10th Tank Corps, going up against an vicious battle against Storm Tigerost. A veteran Kamenius player fighting in this case for the Gross Deutschland Panzer Grenadier Division. His Panzer Pioneers already there, well, technically Pioneer Squads, but you know, details, details, all about imagination, although I wouldn't mind if they actually added actual Panzer Pioneers to the game. And we're seeing already here from Atfelsaft a aggressive push towards the centre for the central munitions point, while a conscript squad is more of a southern bound path. And the first unit out for Sturm Tiger Rust is the MG42's team. But it's a, deli but a deluge of bullets into the faces of the Soviet army. And already looks here we could be seeing an initial engagement gun hinge towards the centre as both forces seem intent on a centre bound path. Second squad of conscripts arriving straight there for Apfelsaft. Point being secured, MG42 moving up. Second unit out is going to be a squad of Grenadiers. Grenadiers so named in about 1942, late part of the war that year, after the losses at Stalingrad and other fighting. Bit of a morale booster, but also basically to designate some larger changes within the army. Same thing happened to Panzer Divisions, their Schutzen units, which were the motorized infantry complements, were changed into Panzer Grenadiers. Other changes were basically changes in size, how much they were actually supposed to have. And basically a lot of units lost a battalion, or in some cases a regiment, I think. So there were considerable changes here and there. The ones that escaped those changes to a certain extent were the SS units who retained the battalions of each regiment. Of their infantry regiments anyways, Panzers though still lost a full battalion. Although for some time they received a battalion of Sturmgeschutz instead, although by 1944 even that was a bit problematic. And we're seeing in fact a pretty aggressive push right here from Sturm Tigerost, going straight for the jugular of Apfelsaft. Actually popping into the building, note that he popped over here, vaulted over, got into the building to check if anything was coming. Then he made a run here for the strategic point, so that was definitely an interesting move right there by Sturm Tigerost, definitely clever. Definitely clever, well played there by Sturm Tiger. Our second heavy machine gun crew arrives as Sturm Tiger continues his rather spearhead like movement. Pioneers merely being engaged, MG42 taking up position in the old church. We do see that Sturm Tiger is getting his hand on both fuel points, but he's having a bit of trouble holding the northern one, although that probably should last long, and that's in fact going to be a bit of a di advantage for Sturm Tigros so who actually doesn't hold a lot of territory. He holds a nice advantageous position but in a sense but he actually isn't holding a lot of resources with it except the only munitions point on the map. There we go, conscripts make the advance and conscripts run straight into that heavy machine gun. And now we do see that Sturm Tigros is counter-attacking to deal with the other side, slightly going to be pushing south then by the looks of it, ignoring the north for the time being. Grenadiers having a problem with the conscripts, but another Grenadier squad is going to move up to support. Popping into the house here, that's going to leave this MG42 less than useful as it's going to get flanked. Somewhat. And there we go, going to pull it back. Bit of passive play there from the Grenadiers. A third squad of Grenadiers, so two MG42s, three Grenadier squads there for Storm Tigost. A heavy tier one build from him. Response from Apfelsaft is a special rifle command, which could then likely mean a scout car for Apfelsaft. So if I sound a bit weird, I've got a bit of a cold. I generally don't take to heat very well. The conscripts here getting caught out, negative cover, coming under heavy fire from two Grenadier squads, MG42 as well, this could be a loss there for Aflisaf within the first few minutes, and there we go, conscript squad wiped out within the first few, in fact first five minutes of the game, that was a bit of a blow right there, a small victory for Das Vaterland. 
As the Cannoneers pulled it off. Soviet Union. Conscripts here. Supply sector under attack. Yes, comrade. Molotov's getting locked, MD-42 setting up. Awaiting orders. Be brave, and supporting, of course, the center, and but also his infantry advances with MD-42s. Storm T Ghost is definitely with some strong infantry tactics. Watch another country squad go down there for Apfelsoft. Or will Yuri make it back home? Yuri a shoemaker from Moscow. Apparently made it. Where he worked in a shoemaking factory. We need to re-establish our supply lines. <laughs> Flamethrowers equipped, I knew because I could hear the laughter, the most sinister laughter of the combat engineers, the pyromaniacs. Scout car on the way, and in fact arrives to support the tank course advances. Well now the conscript squad is also coming in. Field hospitals are up to help. Artflasov keeps his troops in one piece. And we're seeing an additional Pioneer squad there for Sturm Tiger Ost. So very heavy tier one. And of course the scout car might cause a bit of chaos right soon for Sturm Tiger Ost. Also no, no upgrades at all for Sturm Tiger Ost troops. No light machine guns, no flamethrowers, no anything. We have it. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. Blizzard conditions are imminent. And there we go. Scout car with the flamethrower gentleman in it. The machine gun has been changed slightly so it's not so powerful at longer ranges but still will do quite nasty at close ranges. Now we go going straight for the gun that is up north. We are as ready as we can be. There we go. The gun that need to go get out of there but Fritz never made it. He caught on fire. Fighting continues in the center as Aflasov makes another push, getting into the house again. Bankrupt, by the way, for Sturm Tiger Rust. Looks like he is establishing a strong point in the very center by the munitions point. This could be either a command banker or a medic banker. Either would be a good choice. One would allow him to heal his troops at the front line, and the other would allow him to reinforce. Like to make a nice company up there for the Groß Deutschland Truppen. Scout car already repaired. And looks like a scout car has also arrived there for Sturm Tiger Rust. Making its way through the foliage. And there you go, it is in fact a medic bank upgrade. Allowing Sturm Tiger Rust to hold up in the center right there. Allow his troops to keep on fighting much harder without having to constantly reinforce them. Scout car making a push there for the church. MD crew quickly vacates the premises. Will the Gunners be able to save the day? As the MD crew suffers brutally at the same time, Scout Car down south dealing with the conscripts right there. It's MD 42 tearing into the conscripts. There we go, dual Panther Faust. Oh no, perhaps not Scout Car. Perhaps took it out either way. Comet is did make it out safely of the now burning wreck. Mortar rounds going down. Looks like behind fact seeing the guards motor doctrine up for Aflasoft. Getting himself a very heavy mortar to bombard his opponent's positions. Sturm Tigost is a bit threatened right there. And sent in half tech to support his position. Opting not to build a second bunker in that case. North though is largely not his, he might want to consider making a push towards that, he's got the Grenadiers, he's got the half tracks, and if you just upgrade some of them, he'd definitely do quite well. Five kills in the scout car, that's definitely nice. Sniper on the way for Apfelsaft. Let's see if he can't catch a few Fritzes in the crosshairs. And bombarding the heavy, well, the main position here of Sturm Tiger Rust. Well, looks a bit of rifle grenade making an impact on the conscripts holding up behind the tractor. And a quick Molotov right there makes things rather unbearable for the Gunnadiers. Conscripts pushing towards the center. And Scout Car quickly moving up to support. Dangerous work. 
quickly tearing into the soft supple bodies of the conscripts might get anti tank grenade with the second one that would definitely be the loss right there for storm t goes and the scout guy got a little bit too close doing what he can oh went down but looks like a heavy mortar hit landed straight then killed four conscripts that was brutal absolutely brutal quick flame for a heart trick here might have a chance of doing some serious damage to Apfelsaft popping out to Storm T Ghost does he have the munitions he does in fact we also noting in fact he's gone for spearhead doctrine and he's getting himself a mortar half tech which for whatever reasons has actually been based on the light infantry half tech not the medium half tech which is the otherwise half tech available to the Germans Pioneer is being sniped. And the MG might want to abandon the church before the entire thing collapses on it. Like a poorly built house of cards. And there we go, Incendio Barrage. Mortar half tank now needs to be careful, he doesn't get anti-tank grenaded or something else nasty. Now we go into the Barrage straight on the mortar crew, lighting them on fire. Boris is the first one, having consumed the most alcohol recently, and thus being the most ignitable. And there we go, the entire crew lights on fire. Brutal stuff right there, mortar continues to rain death, seven kills already. Another kill in the name of the Fatherland. Sturm Tigo is doing his best, but also Apfelsaf constantly trying to harass and deny fuel to Sturm Tigerost. If he can't have the fuel, then he's bloody well going to make sure the Germans can't have it either. Which is definitely a noble thought. Of course, the question is when will that heavy mortar crew be recruited? Full Looks like another Incendio Barrage. Or perhaps a regular one. Also noting here, taking up for Sturm Tigerost. Support Armour Corps. And looks like the sniper is very much on the run. Looks like the Grenadier Squad was lost as well. Still no light machine gun upgrades. He might want to consider that to help you know with dealing with Soviet infantry keep up the advantage that way particularly since he has so much step we're seeing a recon run the Luftwaffe has been sent in to provide a bit of aerial reconnaissance I don't know I can see it but apparently it's too far up bit of a shame nonetheless Gave Sturm Tigerost an idea of what's going on in his opponent's base, what to expect, what to prepare for. Mortar half tech getting a bit too cocky there. Almost down, needs to get away, get repaired. Also note the work that Sturm Tigerost is doing to maintain his medic bunker, that's well done. Also looks like the heavy mortar was finally recruited. Right grenade against the sniper team. Apfelsaft. Just barely made it. That was awfully close. He might have got knocked out right there. Also, no, it's for some reason a Stuga here, though generally they used to some smaller craft called the Fischler Stork. For the reconnaissance. Not a Stuka. Just felt like I had that. And there we go, Mortar Half Tech is once more ready for combat. Grenadiers holding up the south, conscripts moving in. And lobbing a quick mortar there, the Grenadiers. Fiery death likely ensues. Panzer Grenadier Squad on the way for the Gross Deutschland. And the MG 42 crew stops the Soviets up north. Conscripts rushing 
forwards. We are ready. Pioneers objective Moving up the mortar half track again, but Storm Tigos needs to begin being a bit more considerate with it. A bit more would benefit him a lot, I believe. Abfelsaf continues to push against his relentless and remorseless opponent of the Wehrmacht who's currently dominating the map quite nicely but still Abfelsaf is doing a lot of damage and if he gets an H85 things are definitely going to get a lot more unpleasant Veterans run for the mortar crew for the mortar half tank Conscript running into some serious opposition, getting pinned to the ground, getting murdered. Down to one man, in fact. Ten kills on the mortar, and looks like we're seeing a second heavy mortar out for Apfelsaf. He's creating a small heavy mortar battery. And he's going to blow the sliving snot out of the fascists. Mortar half tank is almost down though. He's still not building any tanks. He could have done so for some time. Either a Panzer von Ostwind or a few Stugs. I would definitely not recommend flooding that many resources, but apparently Storm Tigos is a bit preoccupied with all the things that's going on at the moment. Trying to maintain so many parts of the front line. And there we go. Mortar half tank. Cat burst into fire. As the mortar rounds are apparently lit. Now we have two heavy mortars bombarding the German positions. That is definitely a dangerous combination. Another reconnaissance run out there from Sturm Tigost, intent on keeping track of his opponent's movements. And getting an idea of what to expect, I suppose. Conscripts making a run there. Slight protection from the light cover. Heavy mortar fire, though, forces the MD4 to well. Well, that and I suppose the Molotovs. This is definitely dangerous. There we go, Panzer come back on the way. More heavy mortar round continue to fall down. Sturm Tigos is still holding most of the map. And in fact, it's time for the mid-game analysis. Current situation is that Sturm Tigos is dominating the field, sort of in terms of map control mostly, but of course he's also got some problems because Afrosoft is still laying down a lot of pressure. He's got some very veteran infantry by now. He's got two heavy mortars, which makes it rather difficult for Sturm to actually establish a defensive line since it's very likely going to get blasted into tiny, tiny bits. And of course in that sense what Sturm Tigos needs to do is shift over to a more mobile strategy and he needs to sort of launch some attacks in some regard to try and deal with the heavy mortars. For Apfelsaft, it's all about breaking out. I mean, he's making some small progress in the north and east reinforced. He also needs an H85. He needs something to really put some pressure mentally on Sturm Tiost. And of course, H85 would definitely cause some problems for the Panzer IV, his half tracks, and his bunkers, wherever they might be. So in that sense, that would definitely be a good move, of course, preserving his units, and otherwise, you know, keep up the harassment in the south as well. I mean, that sort of plays also much making it rather difficult for Sturm Tiost to actually focus his forces, because He's holding such a considerably large front line and he clearly doesn't have the troop tracks to sort of hold it. He's trying to create some strong points that way, but basically what keeps happening is that the Apple Sap slips through the cracks, then moves behind the front line, which forces Storm Tigos to pull troops away from the front line. And then of course Apple Sap really delivers some pressure, plus he's got those two heavy mortars. And of course preserving those two is also going to be a bit of a priority for Apple Sap and of course for Storm Tigos, it's going to be a priority knocking them out. So of course there are some considerations then, of course a more mobile strategy would definitely be of help. Perhaps another mortar half track, otherwise trying to flank up perhaps and hit the mortars that way, perhaps with an Ustvid flak panzer could work out, and of course for uh, after South H85, and of course continuing pressure on the northern and southern flanks, ultimately hoping to create enough chaos to actually be able to push through the centre and really push 
Storm Tigerost out. But let's return to the fighting. We've been spotted. Heavy mortar rounds going down. Slight problems with fraps. Nothing to do about that. Might want to move up to that fire pit. But my apologies nonetheless. Snipers moving up there. Panzer for advancing. Making its way through the Soviet lines. Gets hit with an anti tank grenade. Rather obvious. The salt tends to get that close. German position by the center getting absolutely hammered. Panzer IV needs to be careful. If an H 85 were to arrive now, it could prove disastrous. But Storm Tigos continues to push in at damage. Panzer IV enter an enemy base. He knows how to make a nice armor company. That is generally not a clever idea. He could also be getting a second Panzer now. For example, he's got plenty of resources, but he's not quite utilizing them. So there you go, firing away at the heavy mortars. But he could have done the same thing if he just pulled it back and then could have done it much, much faster. There we go, mortar half tank number two on the way. Another anti-tank grenade on the Panzer Kampfwagen here. Finally trying to get that Panzer fall out of there. But it is a rather dangerous work. Ending lives of several Soviets. And pioneers need to get a fragmentation bomb also on the way. Oops. Come on, Storm Tigros, don't tempt faith or the Soviet army. Neither generally tends to work out very well. And there we go. Fate in this case, Comrade Stalin has. Intervene and the SG-85 arrives and there's a Panzer IV with close to half health and a damaged engine first shot hits veterans one he could try and blitzkrieg out of there pop some smoke there we go now blitzkrieg even with a damaged engine that's definitely going to help and no he's not doing it come on Storm Tigerost and he stops it up now and he said he saved the mortar half track the mortar half track no shot hits come on Storm Tiger much too slow there, much too slow for Sturm Die Grost. He just lost a Panzer IV and a second mortar half take a crushing blow right there to the Gross Deutschland. And the medic bunker not really looking like a place you want to be with the people dead inside it. Still holding most of the map, but that could soon change. And likely will. Why are they shooting at us? Panzer gonna with a and Panzer Buchs. We are ready to build it for deploy. Watch out! Grenade! Can the Panzer gonna get close enough to the 85 and knock it out? And how long until this medic bunker finally goes away? Veteran C3 conscripts, a bunch grenade, kills two, including turning Vasily into mush. A second sniper team on the way for Apfelsaft. The 10th tank, tank core. As they're going to do their best to hold up, but aren't quite successful at it. Attempt at a rifle grenade right there, didn't do very much. And there we go, veteran to two snipers, which means they're going to have a fast rate of fire, of course, for people that know, check down here by the start and to sort of get an idea of what happens as they gain more veterancy. Half track not doing too well either. Overall, Sturm Tigo's front line has just taken a crushing blow. Suffered a lot of losses, lost some vital equipment. Now the question is, how is he going to hold it all together? How is he going to hold it all together? He might soon in fact lose this vet MT veteran. Zuba, no Panzer is flanking. Save the day by 
losing one of them. And again, my opponent for this. Molotov at the Northern MG building. And looks like Sturm Tigos is finally going to lose the central munitions point. And looks like he's already establishing another bunker. Pushing back his front line a bit, but still establishing some sort of strong point. And the heavy mortar continues to fire away. With only one friendly killed on this one. And there we go, Apfelsaft storms through the gaps. Still no upgrades for the Grenadiers, I would have liked to have seen some of the light machine guns, I really think that could have done a lot to help Storm Tigerost. Sadly that does not look to be the case in this Grenadiers, Veteran Sophie might go down, need to retreat, come on Storm Tiger! The situation is looking increasingly not good. As more and more men die. And another veteran to the Vicky Lee squad close to death. Come on, get it out of there. Don't tempt fate. There we go, 85 taking a few shots. Veteran D2 for the Panzer Grenadiers. Losing another to the snipers. Which means he has to get these out of there as well. Down to one man. Sniper misses. Sniper just barely misses. That was awfully close. Oh dear, he actually got him on the retreat, I think, with the S85. Good lord. Yes, and what shall Sturmtiger's response to this be? Oh dear. Looks like the building with the. leaving his. Northern flank quite wide open as well. This definitely belongs to the category of very bad things happening. Well done, comrades. What are your orders? It's cold out here. Assault gun ready for action. Yes, now it's going to be an increasingly large challenge to actually stop the advance of Apfelsaft. Engineers ready. Sniper standing by. Unless, of course, Apfelsaft manages to destroy his own, um, some of his own units with a heavy mortar. And there we go, mining, good move, good move there by Apfelsaft. And pushing down south is MG crew leading the way, which is really not how it should be. Allowing the conscripts to quickly overwhelm them, the veterans see three conscripts by the way. And there we go, a tiger has arrived for Storm T Ghost, moving it straight up ahead. Taking already there a few shots from the SU-85. Needs it repaired again, needs to begin taking points. And there you go, Panzer gonna just set off the TM35 mine. An upgrade on the bunker. What do you need? Aftersaf continues his advance to the north. And they're going to need to get out of there. Damn it. Definitely a bad part of the hard drive in this case. At least I'm stable at the moment. And there we go, another Pentagon is caught down. Sniper got it. It also looks like he's actually adding in some guards, rifles to support his advance. Tiger not really being utilized at all, not even the sort of work on the flanks. Grenadiers need to retreat, what are you doing Sturm Tigerost, what are you doing? Tiger opens up on the snipers, miss the sniper, uh, the Tiger generally having a bit of poor accuracy when it actually comes hitting any kind of infantry. H-85 jumping, he's actually going to hunt it down, but the thing is, the H-85 has greater range and greater speed than the Tiger, unless the opponent decides to park the H-85 straight from the Tiger, it's going to not really go well, in particular now that it's Veterans D2, come on, pull out the Tiger, pull out the Tiger, you rushed it far too long into your opponent's base, and already the anti-tank grenade, and then he moves it ahead, 
Well, what are you doing, Storm Tiger? What on earth are you doing? That was just a senseless use of the Tiger. Very senseless. Getting a few conscripts. But ultimately the Tiger is down. And that was definitely a waste of resources. The Tiger tank being quite expensive. Which pretty much mean that Storm Tigers threw out a lot of resources out the window and possibly might have strangled any hope of getting back into the fight with that. As he's got barely any infantry left as well since most of that has been killed in several reckless maneuvers. Now there's barely anything to prop up the front line to keep it together. He's only got one squad infantry, he's got some pioneers, a single MD-42 which is also in a deplorable condition. Basically it's all falling apart. This piece of dirt is ours now. Combat engineers. Combat engineers are More combat engineers by. and looks like another heavy mortar arriving. Mortar. We are awaiting Ready. orders. Which means he actually lost the other one. I wonder to what though. We are losing supplies to the enemy. I wonder to what. Awaiting orders. More Panzer Grenadiers. Supply lines have been cut. Soldiers ready. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. Popping back to Sturm Tigerust. The enemy is taking our territory. Blizzard is passing. Normal weather is returning. And there we go. Barely any units left. He had a nice advantage, but ultimately looks like he threw it away. Which is quite a shame. Not sure why he went for some of all those reconnaissance overflights in the longer run. Some of them, of course, might have paid off and getting some idea of what's going on, but even then, he didn't really seem to utilize the intelligence at all provided. And he could then use the munitions for light machine guns, which might have given him an advantage against the Soviet infantry, perhaps even against the snipers who could catch one of them in the fire. A new unit has arrived. There we go, a German sniper out. I think it's a bit too late for that. I think it's a bit too late. Earlier on he might have proven useful, but now, not so sure. Our lines of supply are disrupted. Panther gonna be suffering to the mortars. There we go, the H-85, veteran 2, pretty much combat ready. Good lord. Must not be a good spot of a hard drive, this. And there we go, the MG crew fact went down. In fact, looks like the MG itself was also wrecked. And the half tag also went down. And that's pretty much the end. The second medic bunker down. Underpants attack. Here. Sniper barely dodging a high close around in his way. Second one, and there we go. Game over. Storm goes realizing the fight is over. Pulls back. Game over. Brutal fight. Storm goes definitely had the advantage for a larger part of the match, but he made some considerable mistakes, like rushing in his tanks. Without support, without any much support anyway, he's getting too close to enemy infantry into a base he knew had a mechanized armor company, and he must have known, or should have known, that the Nation 85 would likely be bound anyway soon. And then, yet he kept pushing on, he kept pushing on, and wasted the Panzer fall in the end on that, and the Tiger was pretty much just a huge waste. It only got to kill three conscripts. It didn't do anything really, it was poorly utilized and just thrown away. Second mortar half check wasn't really preserved either, and he was a bit too, you know, 
careless when it came to his vehicles half the time. I mean, in that sense, he made some mistakes. That combined with not upgrading his grenadiers, which really would have increased the pressure on the conscripts, on the infantry that Storm Tiger was. Yet it did happen, of course, we saw Aflasov playing nice, despite, you know, suffering quite greatly in the end. In the beginning, he still held on, he still, you know, he kept harassing, he kept hitting the flanks, he tried to, you know, disperse to him, to goes force, which is rather how you're supposed to do it. He kept heading here and there, doing some damage, and he took advantage of every flaw that Sturm Tigros made, and he did so quite nicely, the H-85 pretty much sealing the deal, because again, Sturm Tigros' flaws just seemed to, for some reason, just increase, so... Well played by Apfelsaft, initially well played by Storm Tigros as well, but again, by the mid-game to late-game, he just fell apart, is my best word for it. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this match, despite the flaps problems. If you did, want to subscribe, tell your friends, if you didn't, well, I'm p sorry, but you know, feel free to send in a replay of your own, provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane, saying cheers.